Markets are surprised again as China devalues its currency for the second consecutive day. But our next guest says he was expecting it. And another surprise is coming. Gerald Chalente joins us. He's the publisher of the Trends Report. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank you. So you were expecting it. We have a broadcast as part of the subscription to the Trends Journal. It's called Trends in the News. And on July 27th, we said that China was going to devalue its currency. And we have it on the clip in writing. And we said, China's going to devalue their currency. Capisce? Right. And how do you say capisce in Chinese? I have it was no very, clue. It was, we didn't either. Right. So it was very clear. They had been sending out the signals, telegraphing it, but people were avoiding it. The Chinese economy is unwinding. The Shanghai index, they can't fix it. They've been throwing hundreds of billions of dollars. They're rigging the markets. You can't sell short. You can't sell if you have a lot of grade A stocks for six months. We're pulling stocks off. They're rigging the markets. They can't solve the problem. They look at their exports. They're down 8%. Their imports are down. The economy, the real estate bubble is collapsed. They're trying to do everything they can to prop up the markets. They have this fictitious thought, and all of the currencies are doing it, that if you devalue your currency, then you're going to be able to export your product, and people are going to buy it because it's going to be cheaper. What they're not putting together is that there's a global slowdown. Commodity, price, commodity prices are crashing, and currencies are plunging because there's a global slowdown. Now, we're going to look at gold in a, in a second. Uh, so you say you weren't surprised by the news, but what's the next big surprise that's going to come out? Is it from China? Oh, China is the canary in the mine shaft, in the equity mine shaft. And that is, we're looking at a global equity meltdown. And we're, we have said it's going to happen before the end of this year. And the way things are going, it might happen by the end of this week. Now, we know Beijing has been lobbying the IMF to have the currency included in the basket of currencies. Do you think the move yesterday was part of that? I don't think so. I think it's desperation. It's very important to know, if people have been following this, they don't know what they're doing. When you saw the Shanghai markets collapse, they were running rampant trying to figure out what to, have, what to do. And remember, the government propped that mar market up, and 80% of the people playing that market are retail investors, just, you know, small players. They don't know what they're doing, and they're trying to salvage the country in any way they can. You go back and you read their reports. We're not going to do anything to stimulate. We're not going to do anything to stimulate. Oh, you're not? You're going to keep cutting interest rates? You're going to keep cutting reserve currencies? They're desperate. This is act of desperation. So let's look at gold now. It hit a one-month high on Wednesday. Now, a lot of analysts I spoke to said that the China news wasn't impacting the metal, but what do you think? Do you agree? Look what's going on. Gold prices are going up. To me, I always, my first buy of gold, by the way, was in 1978 at 187.50 an ounce. So I've been playing gold a long time. I've never bought gold as a hedge to inflation. I bought it as a hedge against global instability, about currencies being devalued. Here, Look at the Brazilian real. Right. What is it down now to 16-year lows? Suppose, how about the, the Canadian uh, dollar. dollar? What is it down to, 2004 lows? Right. So now if you had that, or the Aussie dollar, six-year lows, if you had gold rather than your reals, your loonies, or your dollars, are you ahead of the game? That's what people are missing. They're missing the devaluation of the currencies so gold is maintaining its value as the currencies are going down. I've, we have forecast that the bottom for gold is basically $150 from where it is now. The upside gold is over $2,000. So the downside risk is very low. It's not like oil where you have to keep pumping it out because your company is going to go bust. Okay, but do you foresee it going to those lows? Uh, it can. It can. You don't know. Because they, In they this year? It could happen. They rigged the markets. Look. The Chinese market, when gold took the big hit down, the Shanghai index trades 16 tons a day. All of a sudden, when the Japanese markets are on vacation, in two minutes, they short 33 tons of gold. You think the market's rigged. How about the Forex market? How about the LIBOR market? There, so what I'm saying is 
They can do anything because the central banks have to protect the value of their currencies. So they could rig the market short time, but you can't keep Mr. Ponzi alive by monetary methadone all his life. All right, you're a trend master. What's in store for the rest of 2015? Geopolitical and economic unrest. And that's why you, you look what's going on worldwide. Turkey and the United States are now actively involved in the war in Syria. You look what's going on in Yemen with the Saudis bombing to obliteration the poorest people in the Middle East. And think about it, you have four million Yemenis living in Saudi Arabia, and now they're saying they're going to attack the oil fields and the monarchy. Look what's going on in Libya. Look what's going on in Iraq. Look what's going on in Afghanistan. Look at the migrant problem from people flooding out of those countries and out of Africa and into Europe. A total time of global destabilization and economic, not uncertainty, but the reality of an equity market meltdown globally. All right, let's end with a topic that I know you love, rate hikes. Will they or won't they? Will we see a rate hike from the U.S. Fed this September? I don't know, but what I will say is that if they do rate, raise the rates, what are they going to raise them? 25 basis points. It's not going to make a big difference. And again, it shows you the frailty of the whole market situation where they have to keep all that cheap dough flowing so that they could, and you know the numbers, the buybacks now are at record high levels because they're borrowing money for nothing and you have all these mergers and acquisitions and stock buybacks. All right, Gerald. I feel so energized after speaking with you. Thanks so much for joining us well, today. Thank you. And thanks for watching this edition of The Gold Report. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching.